Hi, I'm Eli Roth. And I'm Quentin Tarantino. Welcome to our MySpace Artist on Artist. Um, artist on Artist. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. That doesn't uh, yeah, sound yeah, right. I really didn't like the way that yeah, wait, came yeah. out, actually. Welcome to <laughs> Artist Talking With Artist. Artist. There you go. <laughs> Special team. We're gonna be doing one thing and one thing only. Killing Nazis. Sound good? Yes, sir! Now, Quentin, as an artist and as a young filmmaker, something that I've always wondered and admired about you is how you change style with each movie, yet you always stay true to your own voice. How do you go forward and make another movie at the same time staying true to what your fans want, but at the same time not repeating yourself? Look, I just have a way of, of telling my stories that just kind of is is my way but I don't really ever know what that way is when I when I start there is this whole process to me when it comes to writing and um, and even making it but in particular writing there's this whole process that I'm because I don't do it all the time that I'm always remembering how I do yeah. what I do as I'm doing it yeah oh yes of course that's I, I go through the same yeah. like when I'm trying to write I thought oh god I wrote three screenplays before, but how the hell do I do it this time? Well, you know, the thing, but I mean, to me, you know, uh, all this artist talk, I mean, that's one of the things that actually makes you an artist, especially if you're coming from a writer-director place, is, yeah, it's really easy to just take somebody else's script and find something about it that is interesting, and maybe you rewrite it, or maybe you work with that dude and make it come to be. But, um, but starting with a blank piece of paper and a pen, that's starting for square one. Yeah. You get no gold stars for anything you've ever done before because you are starting from square one all over again. You're at the bottom of the mountain and you got to climb to the top. And, uh, and you know, that's a, hard ro that's a hard road to hoe for a lot well, of people. And most people don't do it. Most at, a, at a certain point, they, enough of this. Well, it's, it's terrifying because I felt like that. You think, oh, you've done it, you did it. And I thought it would get easier, but it actually almost gets harder with each film. And I can imagine for you where... I guess it gets harder to start it. Okay. <laughs> it gets harder to start. I mean, it gets harder at the most, you know, uncertain point. All right, but I get, I get a, uh, I get a thrill when I just keep having these little epiphanies of, oh yes, okay, yeah. yeah, all right. I shouldn't have worried about that because this is how I do it, and you know, it's like I'm remembering who I am, you know, through the process, and I think that actually is part of the writing process. Hey, Donnie, Gus German here wants to die for country. Oblige him. for killing Jews. Bravery. You gotta tell me, what is it you, you, you hobnob in your, your Hollywood glory with uh, you know, these different uh, uh, famous actor Jewish leading men, and what is it that they keep coming and saying to you about this movie? Oh, they're like, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like the Ben Stillers, they're, they, they're like, you're, you're making us look cool. You're doing it for all of us. <laughs> they are so, they're like, they can't wait to see it. You know, Jews even, kicking Nazis Even like butts, somebody yeah. like, even like Jonah Hill was like, oh, yeah. and he's like, you guys made the movie we were talking about. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like Eric Bana in music, Munich. This yeah. is really, this is really Jews kicking ass. And it was always Jews making the movies where the Jews weren't tough. So it yeah, finally yeah, took yeah. the non-Jew right, to make yeah. the movie where Jews were tough, <laughs> right. which I thought was impressive. Someone asked me today, they're like, are you gonna help Jews get laid by this rule? And I was like, man. <laughs> I'm doing I, my best. If I can help some nice Jewish boys get some signature on their bat, then. Yeah. Hey, I gotta say this, them. okay. Uh, if you're a nerdy little Jewish guy, and you've got that platonic pretty girlfriend, that chick's got pretty girlfriend that's not giving it up, but is like your best friend and doesn't mind you paying for her movies, all right? When you take her to see Inglorious Bastards, if you can't get it done that night, then she's not your friend. Yeah. She's not your friend. Yeah, then you then don't even Close try. the deal. So what's the plan? We punch those goons out, take their machine guns, and burst them in there, blast them. Is that the plan? That's about it. Look, I think one of your gifts uh, is your ability to see beyond, to see to someone and to really recognize them for their talents. And I was always so thankful that in Cabin Fever, what you saw in me, you saw so much more than a guy who just made a horror film. You saw everything that I could bring to it and my personality. I'm just curious, what was it and it, that you saw in me well, that well, you well, knew I could do this? Well, look, uh, um, 
Uh, nice way to ask a question about yourself. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, why, I mean, I, we can ask about you. What, what it was it about me that, that you thought was know. so wonderful? All right. Well, well let me think about that now. You could have cast <laughs> many actors, and you cast me. Where but I, I chose you myself. because, well, look, no, look, the thing about it is, you know how much I love Cabin Fever, but it wasn't just your movie. Same thing with Robert Rodriguez. It wasn't yeah. just your movie. It was your introduction to the movie. Yeah. All right, you were a real showman. You knew how to work that crowd, like you know. And it's it's sort of like a comedian, sort of like a master of ceremonies, sort of like a other kind of entertainer. But you would do that, all right. And it was funny, and we, we liked you, and and you know the movie's good, but you also want to like the movie because you like that guy. Yeah. And um. And I got well. This guy's got it, man. Yeah. I mean, there's. I mean, there is. Um, I was covered in. There blood. are directors who are performers. Yeah. In that way, and you're one of them. So, can you handle a part? Can you handle being on screen? Hell yeah! If you, that's actually easier than Thinking what it is what you've been doing. You're even this Jewish squad, and so I'm yeah. looking for like a the handsome, Jews. badass looking Jewish guy, and the fact that you can do a Boston accent, which yeah, you Quentin know, totally encouraged us to not only be in character. But like fully misbehave in character. <laughs> and I remember there was one production assistant named Carla, and I was like, Carla! And Brad would be like, Carla! I'm like, Carla, I'm stabbing, dude! And I'm like, Carla, where's my damn food? And you were like, man, it's so cool. I've been waiting to hang out with Donnie. They've been, they've been hanging out in my head for eight years. Now it's, I can drink a beer with those guys. It's no joke, man. I, it was great, though, to actually really get to really hang out with these characters that I created that I lived with for a while. Because I could ask you an Eli question, and Donnie would more Donnie or less would answer, answer the question. Yeah. Well, I got to say, it was, we did that so much that the first time we all got back together mm -hmm. for the premiere at Cannes, I was mm -hmm. telling people, it didn't, people were like, what was it like seeing the movie at Cannes? I was like, it didn't feel like we saw a movie. Mm -hmm. It felt like we were shooting another scene from Inglorious Bastards where we infiltrate <laughs> the Inglorious Bastards premiere. <laughs> and the, the way we were going to get in was Aldo looked the most like a movie star, mm -hmm. so we're going to send him up the red carpet first, and everyone's yeah. going to dress like him. <laughs> and we all wave when he waves, and we all put on our sunglasses when right. he has his sunglasses off, and we smile when he smiles. Yeah. And, and that's what it was like. Yeah. It was like all and, then because, and because we were part of the Inglorious Bastards crew, they didn't check for the dynamite. That they we didn't had, check you know, for the dynamite. We were all passing to go in, but there was such an Aldo and, moment where yeah. not like B.J. Novak. There were a couple of other bastards that some security guards were just like, hold on for a sec. Mm -hmm. And Aldo stops the red carpet. Mm -hmm. And like Moses just waves his hand and parts all, right. all the guards all right. and was like, come on, everyone's getting in. And everybody came onto the red carpet. It was such a cool Aldo moment. Yeah. And by the way, if we hadn't have gotten an 11 minute standing ovation, we would have set off those bombs. Yeah, no right. joke. Right. Well, I was counting it down, man. If it had stopped at 9. Point forty eight. Yeah. We All were, right. There would be no palais, well, man. The burn, baby, burn. Well, it felt like we blew up the theater in a different way. <laughs> we blew up the theater. We're gonna blow the. We're gonna blow up, up this tonight. bitch one that's, way or the other. That's right. We want to be blowing up theaters all over the world. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for joining us. Go check out our new movie, Inglorious Bastards. Thank you for joining us at Our Space. <laughs>